So far we have seen how the relation between numbers and their squares can be geometrically represented using lengths and areas. We have also seen how the deficit between sum of squares and the square of the sum can be represented using areas. Now we are going to look at the reverse relationship that is between the number and its square root and explore if this can be done geometrically also. Unfortunately, areas don't give us a simple way of going to square roots. If you have a square of a certain area, then its side will give you the square root of that area. But how to draw a square with a known area is the problem to start with. So let us try the other way. The other way is via Pythagoras' theorem. Since Pythagoras' theorem deals with right angles, that's what we'll be constructing. So I'm going to start with a simplest one, say with side 1 here, another side perpendicular again of unit length, and then the third side, the so-called hypotenuse over here. Let us dimension this. So this length is 1, this is also 1. Then the square of this length plus square of this length, that is 1 plus 1, will add up to the square of the hypotenuse. So that will be 2. And if the square is 2, the length of the hypotenuse itself must be square root of 2. So that's square root of 2. And then we can continue this process using the square root 2, not as a hypotenuse, but as a side of another right angle triangle. So we'll construct that on top of this. So I'm drawing a perpendicular to our previous hypotenuse, again of unit length. And then the new hypotenuse, the second one, is going to give us the square root of 3. And this process will just continue doing. So this is how our figure might look after we have drawn a few of these right angle triangles. And this is a chain of those. Each one is using the hypotenuse of the previous right angle triangle as one of its sides. And the other side? The other side is always 1. So I have marked these uh, sides of unit length with purple. And then these hypotenuses, uh, which are shown in green here, are the square roots that we are interested in. So let's mark those two. So this is our first length. Then we are going to have this second hypotenuse, third, fourth, fifth, and so on, and sixteenth. And finally, we will mark the lengths of this hypotenuse, each hypotenuse. Say this is square root 1, square root 2, this will be square root of 3, square root of 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So we are getting successive square roots, square root of 12, square root of 13, square root of 14, square root of 15, and square root of 16, which is 4 as expected. Now you can see, if we continue this process, then these right angle triangles will start overlapping on the previous ones, and the whole figure would become pretty cluttered. So instead, some people use a number line to do the same process, same construction really. But uh, then we'll be marking these lengths, you know, square roots, on the number line instead. So let us see how that works. So I'm going to construct uh, a similar right angle triangle. See, this length is already known to be 1. I'm going to construct a perpendicular of unit length like before. And then, like we did before, I'm going to construct this hypotenuse. So we know this is going to be square root of 2. The difference here is, we'll be taking this length as the radius, square root 2 as the radius, and 0 as the center, and we'll be marking it onto the number line, or rather, transferring it on the number line. So on the number line, we have now a point, which represents square root 2. At that point, I'll be erecting the uh, perpendicular again of unit length, like before, and then I'll be drawing the fresh hypotenuse, the second one, which would then represent the square root of 3. So this is square root of 3. And I'll continue doing this process. The process is, we, whenever we get some square root, we transfer that uh, using this such an arc okay, onto the number line. Then we erect the perpendicular of unit length and construct the hypotenuse like this. So this will be square root of 2. Let's check. 
yes indeed uh, this is square root of 4 sorry which is 2 as expected and finally let us see if it really matches by transferring it onto the number line and indeed it does it exactly falls on two. and this is how it will look after we have drawn a few of those and really speaking these hypotenai are not really essential neither are these markings uh, what matter are these arcs and where they meet the number line so let us mark these lengths so let's start from zero so this is our origin this is square root of one square root of two square root of 3, square root of 4, square root of 5, square root of 6, square root of 7 and so on. Finally, some limitations of this process. Number 1, it works only for natural numbers. Number 2, more seriously, it's a recursive process. That means it uses a chain to get an answer. So you need the entire chain to get a square root. For example, if you are looking for say square root of 69, in that case, you would have to repeat this process 69 times. One way of avoiding that is you start with uh, some number uh, which is a perfect square like 64. We know it is 8. So from 8, you repeat this process only 5 times to get it. So thereby you can even reduce the error because errors stack up as you keep recursing. But what about uh, getting the square root of say 17.5? This process is not going to help us, not directly at least. So there we'll have to use another trick. In algebraic terms, it will be ratios, proportions, and geometric means. In geometry, it translates into similar triangles and a chain of them. We'll see that in the next clip.